Right guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Baz, well the Faber, as most of you do know. Now then, today we've got something, or should I say, I've got some big news for you all. Yeah? So I've decided to leave the Fox Group. Right? So now most of you will be thinking, wow, why is he leaving the Fox? Well really, I'm not really leaving the Fox, as Foxy is my friend, yes? He's not... Uh, it's more of a friend than an employee relationship, should we say, right? And um, I've decided to go at it on my own with my younger brother. How we doing? Now then, that's our Dan, who owns DTM Fabrications. Now then, at the moment, we're studying Dan's workshop, right? He has massively outgrown this workshop within the last eight years, is it? Well, we start, started in 2016. Um, Started getting a bit bigger in around 2020 and then uh, over the last 18 months we've gone more into the structural side of things and uh, yeah, we've massively outgrown it. We've got a huge yard that's completely full of steel outside um, and yeah, we need some bigger premises and hopefully teaming up together. Well, this is a dream that my, my dad, our dad, <laughs> always... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh. The, and my dad always wanted yeah. <sighs> and it's finally happening. It's happening. It's happening. So <sighs> So we're gonna get it together and we're gonna run a plant division and structural, structural division. Architectural right stainless Aluminium. Now then, I have decided that this unit is nowhere big enough to take on the plant side of things as it is now. Yeah, so I'm going to be looking at a few units within this episode. Yeah, and uh, maybe whether I'll find one in this episode or not, I'm not sure, but it. It, you know, it's definitely something that it's nowhere near big enough, put it that way, if we want to start doing there. Uh, in next two months, we'll have found another unit. Yeah, yeah. Without a shadow. Right, so, the main thing I want to get across here to, to the viewers is, Foxy, I've got his backing, I've got his blessing, right, and also, he's letting me take a little blue. Right, so... That means I'm instantly set up to do site welding and site repairs, right? He's not giving it me, I'm buying it, obviously, yeah? But, Little Blue's coming, and Dan's main problem at the moment is men. As all other fabricating companies out there, that is the main problem, yeah? Now then, within this plant division, my plan is, over the next couple of years, is to bring in the best welders within the country, right? And I'm gonna pay them the best rates, right? That's the plan. Best welders, best rates, a good workshop, good welders, all good equipment, and we're gonna attack it full bore, yeah? Not only are we gonna attack it on the plant side, we're gonna attack it on the structural steel side, yeah? So what, what date are we on now? 18th, oh, 17th, April. April, right, so, this is where we are now on the 17th of April, 2024, yeah? Let's see where we are now in April 2025. That's what I will say here and now, right? So we've got big plans between us, yeah? And uh, we're gonna make it happen. And hopefully you'll all come on this journey and follow us. And um, please let us know in the comments what you think about all this, what I'm just telling you now, because it is really important to me to get your feedback, yeah? And um, I think I'm doing the right thing. You let me know if you think I'm doing the right thing by working with my brothers again. 100%. Oh yeah, and we're also, within this episode, doing a job for the digger girl, Amy, up in Scotland. And uh, obviously we're doing something for her, for Scott Plant, that you will see. Wow, and look at this British weather again. That window's open, not defender direct. 
Uh, I'll be waiting for a minute. Right, so here we are now down at Summit Engineering Fabrications Limited. <coughs> and look at this. Dip of the dog for the digger girl. Yeah, there's more fabrication to be to do with that yet. Um, and that will be going up to Scott Plant. That's just part of it. And these guys have cut it out for us on their laser machine. Now then this, that's the laser machine there itself that's cut it out. And we have actually got some footage of it uh, being cut that we will show in this little uh, video. But these guys who own Summit Engineering, right, the main man used to work with my dad back in the day and I've just seen him for the first time in 20 years and believe me, it just brought a tear to my eye because my dad is no longer here, yeah? They've got everything to do with like plasma in, um, CNC, they've got lit, um, presses, they've just bought a 20 gram brand new Bormor saw, you know, mainly do flat plate cutting. I mean, look at this machine that does this. Proper, yeah? But it'll be like that on the other side. Can you see that? Oh, it's a bit rough. But if, once it goes through the machine, <coughs> it's cleaned up by these and that. Right, I've never seen one of these before. But that could be dead handy for like doing grill plates and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad I've come down now to see him because um, like I say, I've not seen him for 20 years and it's his son that runs this place now called Alan. Um, there you, and there you've got a plasma. Now it, it is a bit of a weird setup workshop because it's on different floors, right? But I'm telling you, it's a little gold mine. It's a little gold mine. And I can't believe I've not been here before. Yeah, so this actual building used to be an old paper mill and every every building around which is hard to show on the camera here now has is full of machines it's full of machines so i've just got the lads out of the way just to do a little bit of filming um and yeah we will go more into depth in this place because i'm going to start using them a lot more for certain stuff they can they can basically do on my bucket floors and stuff I'll just come down with the Ardox plate and they'll, uh, they'll do the profiling and the bending if I ever need any hangers. And um, away we go. So here's the new Bormar Pro Saw. Proper thing. Now this is what I need. This is what I need, something like this, yeah? We've got like a, a little backstop here, turnable head. I'm not sure what size it'll cut, 510 by 350 that. So I presume it'll cut 510. 350 and here's the new press brake 240 ton press now then that is for sale i might actually buy i might actually buy that myself director i might actually buy that myself that's a good press for us that and they've got a good set of rollers outside that i need and then that guillotine there I used to use that 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago as a kid. Probably 35 years ago. Do you know what I mean? I remember that guillotine. So I'm, uh, I feel a little bit emotional. Now then, Baz Green, who owns the place, he's actually over there, but don't want to be on camera because old school guys don't want to be on camera, do they? But I'd like to put a little bit of a memory out there for me and him because, uh, yeah, very emotional. Anyway, director, we'll end it there. All right, so I've just arrived at JJ Bullens. 
and we've been to Glasson this morning and taken the clamp bucket off the Senna Bogan. Now then, this is in for major repairs, as Alistair will tell us what it needs now. So what do you think? What are you thinking, son? Full overhaul by the looks of it, lad. Um, definitely cut out these tubes because we've got bends and cracks everywhere. Yeah, so the, these All tubes are actually bent, aren't they? Yeah, you can see. You know, mainly there. There's been a crack and a previous repairs, hasn't it? Well, they fell from the original well point, yeah. so I presume that whenever this bucket was designed, it'll have been that'll have been a stock item from there to there. From there to there, be stock, would it? Yeah, possibly extended. Do you know what I mean? So then, then else. whoever can build, build the bucket to whatever size they want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the big issue here, Alistair, is that. Yeah, I was just looking at it. It's got some. Uh, I'll be honest with you. That's been welded about five times. Yeah. Right. So that needs to be replaced if it can't be welded. Yeah, I think getting on to original manufacturer to see if we can find one. Is it a Kinsoffer? Um, Lieber. Lieber is it? Yeah, Lieber. So, but we've got a challenge to find one of them. Yeah. I don't think keep welding it is is a good idea, especially if you know it's lifting stuff. Yeah. So um, it's all new pins and bushes. Pins, bushes. We might as well do the rams reseal whilst they're off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any line boring to pretty much all of the pivot points. I would have thought looking yeah. at it, just. We know a bit more when we get them apart, really. Yeah, yeah. So. Now then, the big question is, uh, now then, the big question is really, time-wise, what are you thinking? Um, because I've got two weeks. Well, it's two weeks then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's two weeks. We've, uh, I think it's going, uh, we've got another ship due in in two weeks' time. So, uh, if it can't be done within two weeks, then we're going to have to hire one from somewhere. Do you have one in stock or not? Um, we could probably find someone that's got one, but I'm pretty confident. We're going to get it all steam clean now. It's yeah. just come in, we've literally just unloaded it. We're going to steam clean it and get it stripped today. And then we can uh, start the pin manufacturing. Oh, so you're going to jump on it today for us, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I've got two weeks, I need to start today. So we'll use EN24 for all the pins. We'll get all the bushes ordered, get them here. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll hit it yeah. With, with everyone that we've got. Yeah. All right. So whilst we're at Bullens, they've got another A45G in here. Do you know, like they've been building them big bodies for them. Well, what they're doing with this one, they're actually putting greedy boards on the standard body, and then that's some 50 mil plate there. So I take it out that you're making it so you can take the sides off. Yeah, for transport, we've got to. Um, it's obviously too wide. It comes out 500 mil from the standard width, and then it's up near enough a meter. Up a meter from the existing height of the machine body. So, are you going to make the back door pivot now? Then, so we're going to move. Um, the options are we're going to leave the standard ones on, so if it ever comes off. So, I'll leave the standard hangers on there. Yeah. And yeah. Then replicate that up to the where the crease is. So basically, move that, and well, another one of them yeah. up there. Up there, yeah. Up and make a new back door. Make a new back door to suit the, the new shape that you can see from here. It's a bit bigger than standard. We've just got to chamfer those folds at 45 to match that profile, if you like. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. And then yeah. the new door. Do you know what I'm saying? I love the type of work that you do here. Do you know what I mean? It's all very different, isn't it? And uh, I will be telling the viewers uh, next week what well the fab is up to, shall yep. we say. Yeah, <laughs> right, is the other one done or not? The other big one? No, we're still, uh, still, on, still on with it. We'll go and have a look if you want. Yeah, we'll go and have a look at that. Yep. And here's the body in manufacture for the other A45. Just tell us a bit more about this, Alistair. Well, we've nearly finished fully welding that now. Tailgate's ready for fitting. Actually, uh, the lads that are on it have just moved on to something else for today. Um, as you can see, we're, we're nearly there completion on number one. How many hours? Um, we're about 800 now. About 800 hours? Yeah, about 800 hours. Um, so you're probably going to get to 1,000 hours by the time it's hot yeah, wagon? I think so. By the yeah. time it's done and out the door, 
probably line board underneath, so we're probably yeah. yeah. What are these lads doing in here? We've got a um, couple of axles getting line board. Um, big strap handling grab in the back getting line board. How many line boring kits have you got? Uh, ten. Ten? Ten kits, yeah. Have you got quite a few lads out on road? Four on the road permanently, with two spare vans that any one of our workshop lads can go out yeah, if yeah. needed. Yeah. And uh, four welders on site as well. And that's the tailgate over. Oh, let's have a look at that whilst we're here, eh? How much weight's it tailgate? I'm not sure. Um, but I think, like we've said before, we've got to reduce the weight. The, uh, the next one. We're going to get a weight of this and then look at designing it to, to all probably bring a couple of tons I reckon. I'd say, yeah, yeah, not too far off, yeah. yeah. Alright, Sam, I think that's enough for uh, me here. Yep. You get on with your job. Yeah. And no uh, if you can push that pump through as quick as possible. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, right, so we'll get, uh, like I say, we're going to get that washed off now, get it stripped. Well, we'll send you some pictures later on. Sound. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Well, right, I'll tell you what, director. Uh, show them that little bit of footage from the uh, Algarve where I was last week. At this beautiful villa that I'm in in Portugal, Lagos, in the Algarve. That's my little Kia car. They rented for the week. Now then this is a brand new villa that will be coming up for rent shortly off a good pal of mine and the reason I'm here is because I was sat down with him one day and telling him how I was feeling and I was feeling a little bit burnt out and he basically just said to me hey oh, Baz, go and use the villa for a week and here it is and I can't thank him enough because uh, I'm like three days in now and it's absolutely fantastic. So I just thought I'd show you guys around because hopefully by the time I put this out on YouTube the website will be up and running and I will be able to put a link in the description. Um, hopefully. Uh, so I will just uh, take you for a little walk round now. Uh, we'll go in through the garage here. It has got a, like a basement area with uh, a cinema room in. Yeah, I'll take you down there first. Eh? We don't need the glasses on in the house. Well, here we got the basement area with the big TV. And you got all your channels down here. All your Netflix, Disney, whatever you want. And all the British channels to watch TV. We do have a bedroom down here with uh, two three quarter beds in it. Gorgeous. Every bedroom has its own bathroom. can see I'm actually staying in the master bedroom upstairs which I will show you now so yeah a big thanks to the guys that have lent me this for the week um, I really need it I'll be honest with you I really did need it this is another bedroom on the first floor you can walk out onto uh, where the pool is on the jacuzzi mega if you wanted to come and bring your family away not too sure uh, what kind of money this will be
I'd say the villa's valued around just over two million. So I can't see it being cheap. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's mega. You pay what you get for you get what you pay for, don't you? So here we got uh, the lounge area and the kitchen. I've been cooking my own meals through the day and then going out at night. Teas, etc. Drinks. Who's that on telly there? I don't know well the faber. I'll show you the main bedroom. That's where I've been keeping on balcony. And then we've got the double sinks and double shower. Mega. And then we've also got a rooftop terrace, which I'll take you to now. This is just an unbelievable place to come on holiday, especially to relax. Other luxury villas around you. Now then it is only a a stone throw away from the beach and nice restaurants. Um, I've had some mega meals here. I've met some really nice people as well, uh, especially some Americans. Uh, here's the beach. to uh, do whatever you want to do while you're on all this over there. Now if you can see between them two houses there, that little uh, wooden walkway, and there's lots of them about for really good walks. Uh, I've got some serious amount of steps in whilst I've been here. Obviously I've come away to think. And uh, a good time to think is whilst you're walking. And uh, obviously on your own, Ooh. obviously on your own as well, is the best time to think. So yeah, hope you like this villa. I hope uh, there will be a link in the description for you guys to look at if you want to book it. I couldn't recommend it anymore. Probably the best villa I've ever been to anyway, put it that way. So a big thank from me to the guys who own this gate, who own this place. Uh, I'll not mention any names as I don't know if they actually want their name mentioning. But if the link is in the description, it will go through like uh, an estate agent or something like that to uh, to rent this place yeah so i'll be back into work on tuesday morning and we'll see where the boys are up to see you then well i'm back and i'd normally say it's good to be back but this time i'm saying it's not good to be back that was that was some holiday i tell you now nice break that i needed I needed, uh, I needed that desperately, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we'll have a busy week ahead. I'm, this is uh, Sunday today. I'm only actually back in work on Tuesday. Uh, I have a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I met up with some um, some Americans that uh, I had a lot of fun with, should we say. And uh, <laughs> I never used to get on with Americans on, on Instagram. I used to go to war with them. Well, trolls, 
I'd, I'd call them trolls really, but and I learned how to deal with trolls. And the way to deal with trolls is, don't reply to any any of them. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, these Americans in particular, um, we had a lot of fun together, should we say? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to Preston. All right, so we've just pulled up in the yard. I'll come to pick, pick little blue up. I just want to go through it and give it a good wash, make sure it's all ready to go. But uh, director, you take the defender and I'll take a little blue home for a wash. So we're just on our way back down to Summit Engineering now to pick up some bits for the digger girl, Dipper the dog, uh, that we've had uh, laser cut out of steel plate and uh, a few other little bits and bats that he's done for us and uh, he's done something that he's not told us about yet so we shall find out in a minute as we are just pulling up. Alright, let's see what... Uh, Alan's done for us down here. Here we go, here's Dipper. So my plan is, basically, so we get Dipper, the dog, and it's gonna be like, kind of mounted on that like that. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a frame for this. So I'll, I'll make a box section frame for the Dipper. And then I'm going to make it like on a trestle, if you will. So it's like sat on a trestle. And then what's going to happen is, this ring here, you see how we've got the little cut out there? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll open it up and I'll put it with inside dipper, yeah? And then, if you can imagine that being inside there now, with like another piece of square bar, and this welded to a square bar. So it's like that, yeah? And then the tilt, grab, will get hold of this. So I'm not sure on the diameter what that needs to be yet. So I might have to shrink that down a bit. Do you know what I mean? Right? I just have to close that up a bit, yeah? Uh, but that's the, that's the gist of it of what we're doing. Yeah, so that'll be in there. Whoever's sat in the digger at Scott Plant, right? And this will be the idea of to, to, to get this and go around all a bit of fun, all again, you know what I mean, for uh, at the show. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and electrify it. So if it touches, it buzzes. Yeah, do you remember that game? Remember that game, Doctor or whatever it was called? I can't remember what it was called now, excuse me, director. Operation, that was it, operation. So when you was to touch something, it buzzes, yeah? Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but we'll suss something out. Do you know what I mean? And Scott Plant's only in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, that's the idea of that. So, Alan's also done something for Amy, the digger girl. Uh, let's have a look. Also, he's used his deburring machine. There's his details, if anybody wants to know. All right. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think she'll like that. That's going to add a big piece of stainless as well. So if we to, that's it, and the bigger girl's uh, actual sign that she uses, isn't it? I think that's a nice little touch for her, that. So I hope, I hope you uh, appreciate that, Amy. Yeah? Good thing, that. So also, Dan the man, as I like to call him, who is our manager from uh, Driven Dan, Driven Talent. He is actually coming down to Preston today, or should I say up to Preston today, um, to check out this and something else that we've got going on with him. And um, so, I don't know, maybe we could incorporate this into what we're doing, I'm not sure. Or just make this as a separate plaque for herself, do you know, to put on a wall somewhere. Um, but I'll discuss that with him in the yard shortly. Oh yeah, big thanks to Alan at Summit Engineering for all this.
Right, let's get back to the yard and get this together. We need to get this together pretty quick, actually. Because you, director, are going to have to go and drop this off up in Glasgow. Let's go. Right, guys, so my manager, Dan the Man, from Driven Talent, has uh, just brought up some guys from Fuel Active because we've been having massive issues with fuel problems on our machines in the last six months. And then, what's your name, pal? Matt, hello, Baz. Nice Matt. to meet you. How are you doing, mate? So, would you like to explain to us and our viewers what you've brought along here? Yeah, certainly. So, what you're looking at here is uh, the Fuel Active system. So, we've replicated a fuel tank. Uh, on the left hand side you can see a standard fuel pickup pipe so this is what you'll typically see on your construction equipment your hgvs uh, on the right hand side we have the fuel active system well all right guys so you know about the plans what we're thinking now then I'm thinking about a new workshop, yeah? Now then, whether it's gonna be this workshop, another workshop, I'm not quite sure. Well, this is actually 3,000 square foot. I'll show you inside in a second. But what I, one thing I really wanna say, if you look down this side here, I obviously want, I need some offices and I need a canteen, yeah? So I could put two containers down here, one on top of each other, basically. One as an office, one as a canteen for the lads, yeah? Now then, the other side of the yard, I'm not going to share the location just yet with you guys, but the other side of the yard, we've got this, all this area here. It's all going to be stoned up and rolled nice and level. Yeah? So I could put my steel racks up outside. Any, any steel storage outside is what I'm thinking. Let's take a look inside the building. It's a brand new building. As you can see. So, I'd say we've put some crane rails up. We might have to drop a couple of columns down to put the rails on and put a crane in here. Now then, it's not, I know it's not mega high, but it's enough for what we need to do. Now then, if, if we agree on a price with the landowner, we might go for it. We have two other options at the moment that we're thinking about. This is a third. I quite like this. I think it's perfect for me and our dam at DTM. But we all have to agree and, uh, and make it work for all of us. So yeah, the future looks bright for Welder Faber. Yeah, this is just, uh, one of the ones that we're looking at. Right, so if you look at the bays within this workshop, right, obviously I'm thinking about getting a CNC plasma, looking at getting a um, press break, uh, we're looking at getting a guillotine, and a big bandsaw, and a set of rollers. So, Is it actually big enough to fit all that in? Now then, 3,000 square foot, pushing it. You're pushing it once you get your, all your trestles in and uh, your welders and everything else, yeah? Now then, don't forget, guys, I have had an 80,000 square foot workshop with 95 lads, yeah? So I know what it takes to set a workshop out. Now then, this... Hmm, could be a good little starter. I ain't gonna go too big, I'll tell you that. With, with being 46 years old now, I have learned a lot over these years, yeah, what not to do, right? So now we're going on my own again with my brother um, and the director. So that's three brothers all working together. You know, uh, we, could have, we could get some good, some good things going here. I think this is perfect. Maybe could just do it an extra thousand square foot. But again, it's all down to price, rates. You know, you've got to take everything into account. 
you know, you've got to take everything, everything into account. Directors tripping over stuff. Director will probably spend most of his time in here. <laughs> but as you can see out here, as you can see out here, I don't want to put any offices or a canteen in here. I want to keep them outside the workshop and keep this as just a working area. Um, you know, the more working area you've got, the better. The, the main thing about starting up here now is the infrastructure. Uh, you know, you've got to get all your bears, all your trestles, and get everything set out properly for all your lads. It needs to be a good light workshop, plenty of sockets, get some good ventilation in for the welding, and uh, away you go. So yeah, I just thought I'd share this one with you. There is others that um, we'll put on camera at a later date, unless we decide to take this one. We shall see. Right, so you've just seen the unit that we're hmm, possibly thinking of renting. Right, but um, the next thing I wanna do, or the first thing should I say, is buy a trailer. Now, when I started out all them years ago, a long time ago now, 20, 20 odd years ago, right, and um, I had a Land Cruiser, a trailer, a welder gen, and a set of bottles. That's how I started out, yeah. So, I'm gonna do the same again. We're in a Defender now, something similar to a Land Cruiser, ain't it? And I'm gonna buy a trailer. Now then, my pal, Matt Taylor, Taylor's trailers, I like to call him, because he knows everything there is to know about trailers. Told me that Nugent trailers are the best. So, there is a Nugent dealer just down the road from us, and uh, we're gonna go and take a look. Now then, have you noticed something? As you can see, the Defender has had new stickers, right? And uh, one thing I need to, to point out to you is that Foxy is 100% behind what we are doing, yeah? So he, we are gonna still be working for the Fox Group no matter what, all right? So next week is my last week at Hurt Plant and Foxy is gonna come on camera and I want him to put his opinion of me on camera to you guys, yeah? Because to me, he, how can I explain Foxy? He is the salt of the earth to me, yeah? He's like the best of the best, right? He's done nothing but good things for me, right? And he's supporting me 100% with what I'm doing. So I really want him on camera next week just to put his opinion across to you guys. Now then, here we are at a Nugent dealer, Stuart Taylor International. Let's go and take a look in the shop. Well, check this out. So this is at Salmsbury, next to British Aerospace. Let's have a take a look in this shop. <laughs> but I didn't know they sold all this tackle. Look at this lot. Not a lawnmower director. I could do with a lawnmower. So it looks like they're uh, a dealer for these guys. Go. And still, I'm Milwaukee. Hmm, I could do with a trimmer as well, Direct. <laughs> right, so I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll find the main man, eh? We'll find the main man to talk to. Little Milwaukee stand there as well, too. Right, so let, let's fight man mom. How are we doing, bud? Afternoon, how are we doing? What's your name? Tom. 
All right, Tom, I'm Baz. How are we doing? I'm after a trailer. Okay. I see you've got a few in stock there. Yep. Nugent trailers. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want a 10 by 6 oh, What 10 by 6 have you got in? Got something back, do you want to come and have a look? Should we go and have a look, director? Let's go and have a look. Now, I've been told these are the best, is that right? These are the best. Yeah? Yep. Best really can buy. Better than an Arthur? It's got to be said, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got plenty of stock in stock. Yep, so we've got 18s, 16s, and then we have a 10 by 6 there. 10 by 6 there. And you've got some tipping trailers down there as yeah, well. Yeah, got tipping trailers, plant trailers, cattle trailers. You do the full range? Oh, yes. Let's have a look down here. Well, that, that there, that's what I'm after there. Yep, 10 by 6 besides yep. three, t three and a half tonner. Now then, for those viewers that don't know, I've been told there's no rattles or anything on them. Look at the sides on that, how solid they are. And the locking point for when you're strapping stuff down. You know what I mean? That's dead handy, that, isn't it? Yes. Just for strapping stuff in back. Hmm. Is that available now? It is, yeah. Is it PDI'd? Yeah, it's PDI. You can take that, take it for a week, give it a try. See give it a think. try. Give it a try, see what you thought, sir. Hmm, let me have a think about that. So we've got general purpose, tipping trailers, and then we're going to plant trailers down here. All right. A little bit bigger. What tonnage is that one, then? That's a three and a half ton track, so right. 14 foot. That's a belt of that, isn't it? Mm. Extra lashing points, LED yeah. lights, yeah. everything on it. Yeah. Where they actually built these? Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. Right. What do you think they are? Actually, I'm quite impressed with them, are you? Yeah? Right, so let's talk about this 10 6 one here then. So this is actually PDI'd right now. Yep, they're all PDI'd, ready to go. And I can use it, for, I can borrow it for a week. Yep. So what is your longest trail that you do? The longest trail we do is an 18 foot. 18 foot, right. So I'm probably going to be needing a long trailer in a few months time. But that would do for now. Okay. Basically, we're going to want to make it into a weld, welding rig. Um, so I'll put a welder up back, some gas bottles and stuff, and uh, uh, like a tool, tool case, if you will, you know what I mean, to keep yep. up tools in. Yep. But do you know what? Uh, what kind of money is it? Four and a half grand. Four and a half. Right. Well, we'll discuss the price off camera. Yeah. Right. But can I take it now? Yeah. What do you reckon, director? Right. Let's go do a deal. So what's this little thing here? So this is a Flailbot robotic banking mower. A banking mower, so it's a remote control job? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, doing multi-way bankings. All ah, right. Is that one of the tracks go out on? Yeah, telescopic yeah. tracks. Yeah. That's well, a little thing, isn't it? Why you're here, we have an issue with these. What's up? They keep on banging the back end. Right. Could you what, come up with some up? In what way? What way banging the back end? Because you're going behind multi-way crash barriers, they keep on knocking these off. Right. So, so it basically needs like a frame making around the back end. Yeah, ideally. And could we pick up off these but these points here? Yeah, yeah, that can be removed, no problem. So that this could slide out? Yeah. And we could pick up off that? Yes. Uh, we could also pick up off the sides. Now then, do these these will need to open yeah, up, won't they? Off, yeah. These all lift off. Right, so they lift off. They're not on a hinge. They lift oh, off. Yeah, they lift off. Right, so we could then, in that case, come out. Just thinking out loud, you know. By the way, we could come out, basically around, up, and around the side of it, and around the side of it, and bolt into that. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's just thinking out loud there, by the way, guys. So I'll have to have a good think about that. I didn't, this is like the yeah, first time I've been here. So 
Let me just... Uh... So what are you telling me? You want me to do that as a job for you? Yep, definitely, please. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's my first job for Weld of Hammer. Yeah? Crack it. Let's go and do a deal. Right, so the deal has just been done. This is our first trailer purchase. Maybe of many. You never know what, uh, what the future holds for us. But is this, is this a family-run business, this? It is, yeah. My dad founded this in 2003. 2003? Yep. All right, so we go and set a good while then? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. All going good, busy? Yeah, can't grumble, can't grumble. Can't grumble, that's good. Is he still about? No, no. My dad passed away in uh, 2020. 2020? Yeah, lost him to uh, brain tumour, so... Wow. Yep. Wow. Well, I can relate to that. And you guys will know how I relate to that with the start of this video, yeah? So, anyway, I really appreciate the deal we've just done. Thank you very much. Let's get it hooked up. Fantastic. Yeah, no. Don't get better with time though, does it? Let's play it on, aren't we, first? What's this little thing for here? So that is for ramps, if you only wanted to fit ramps to it. Is it? Yep. I didn't know that, director. <laughs> right, that's even better then. I mean, look at all cross members under there. That's like twice as many as other trailers, isn't it? Yeah, they're built like tanks. Yeah. Right, I'll probably have a set of them off you soon. All right, let's see how it pulls. Right, director, I think we'll end with this one here and now, but that will need lowering down on the tow bar as you can see it is a little bit high at the front end there so we'll just drop it down to the boat below and uh, Tom really appreciate that deal no problem, thank you yeah. very much and uh, I'll let you guys know how this trailer is within a couple of months time but I already know really I know they're the best do you know what I mean so uh, yeah I mean this this episode chapter has been a little bit of a mixed bag because there's a lot been going on in the background but please uh, leave a comment like subscribe and share as you always say and uh, as much feedback as possible on this one, please. Cheers, I'll see you on the next one.